Okay, good morning, Harvey. Good morning. All right, I'm going to start us with the sponsors and then hopefully the guys that are at Minion will be getting on shortly. It's not a lo as long a daff as we've had before, so we shouldn't have a problem. Okay, a uh, year of learning by Dr. Paul Konigsberg, in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Rubin de Leibish, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nissen Hara Nissen Cardoso. Uh, Paula and Ed Bromberg, and many of their friends, to 115. To 115. Malcolm Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Rav Tzvi Hirsch, Mitzvah Yaakov, Sarah Badafim, Yisrael Tzvi Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Tessel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom Ben Yitzchak Kalevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bad Yisrael Doe, Friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef. Friends of Avi Gitler, Avramea Ben Shimon. Shall share her children and grandchildren. In memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel Ben Arav Akiva. Marsha Federbush and family. In memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Ben Harav Shimon. Friends of Joe Wolf, in memory of Joe Joseph Ben Chaim. Darren and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends, in memory of their herd mom, Harriet Friedman, Evel Bas Yaakov. Have a month of learning by Stanley Presser, in memory of his mother, Leah Bas Yehuda, his mother in law, Golda Bas Avram, and his wife, Ruchum Bas Moshe, Ruth Burian, and Judy and Evel in memory of Ruth and Judy and Bas and Miriam. And Father Yitzchak ben Yosef for Esther. Jill and Perry Meltzer, in memory of her father, Yaakov ben Yosef. B. Peiser, in memory of her mother, Rezel Bas Shammai, and her stepfather, Avram Michal ben Shmuel Halevi. A week of learning by Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam and Ramona Levine, in memory of Charlie's wife and Sam Menucha by Michael and Judy Poretsky, in memory of his brother, Chaim Tzvi ben Yersh, by Barbara and Sandy Cohen, in memory of his brother, Chaim Shalom Aryeh ben Eliyahu HaKohen, and by Zev Kipperman and Sherry Dobiki, in memory of Zev's wife and Sherry's mother, Sheva Libi Bad Reb Moshe. Today is the 15th of the month, and we therefore have dates of learning by Sidney and Sandy Goldschmidt, in memory of his father, Haver Ephraim ben Hechavah Moshe Yehuda, by Jules and Deborah Marks, in memory of his father, Avram Yitzchak ben Yehuda, by Judah Klein, in memory of his mother-in-law, Tzipora Shendel Bat Moshe, by Honey and Ralph Chaffetz, in memory of her brother, Yitzchak Morach ben Yosef, and Shema's having a Leah, Frank or Okay. All set. Okay, so thought we would pick up again uh, from Pave on Pavov, where we left off about three lines, two, three lines down. The Mishnah began Vahatan with the challenge. Ein Mafterina Chaha Pesach Afi Komen. Okay. Which we basically explained is that one wasn't to change their location. Right? And whether that was the change of location from one Chabura registered group to another, or it was from one house to another. And so the Raising that as the issue. The Gemara then continued, Vama Rav, is Rav, Shalom Yakru, Mechavura, Lechavura. 
Doesn't that seem to imply that one cannot change, move from one group to another, right? Low kasha, it's not a problem. Kan b'sha'at achila, kan b'shalosh b'sha'at achila. One was during the time of eating, the other was not during the time of eating. Okay, and so that's really where we left off yesterday. Okay. So Gemara wants us to continue discussion of this uh, in, indication. Tashma, listen to the following brighter. Abba Shaul Omer says, Abba Shaul, Aliyat Beit Kadshe HaKadoshim, Chamura Mi Beit Kadshe HaKadoshim. Abba Shaul is suggesting that uh, since we had a previous statement, that the roof and the second floors were not sanctified. What about the following, he says? Okay, a brighter that says that the upper floors of the, let's say, uh, base Hamikdash was more stringent than the lower floor, okay, where all of the uh, We'll use the word equipment for the time being, right? Where the shulchan and uh, things like that were located. Why is that the case? Did he, does Abba Shaul say that? Shabbat kodshei hakadoshim, kohen gadol michnas lo pam echad b'shana. That once a year, the high priest would enter the kodshei kadoshim, right? The main level of the heichal. Right. He would enter it once a year for Yom Kippur, right? Va'aliyat Beit Kodshei HaKadoshim, but the second floor of the Hechal, Ein Nichnesim La, Ela Pam Echad B'Shavua, that one did not enter there except for once in seven years. In other words, they went there to check the status if it needed to be repaired. Va'amayla, and there are those that say, Pa'amayim b'shavua, two times seven years. Va'amreila, and others say, pa'amechad b'yovel, that they didn't go up there, into there, except once in 50 years. Le'da mahi kufa, in order to know what was needed there. In other words, to check if it needed renovations. It's probably good, good guarantee. Painting, whatever. Okay? Now, amama, amama, Amar Rav, Rav Yosef continues and says the following: Mehechal Nikum v'Nativ Inish. He says, "From the Hechal, we're going to establish that as a basis to try to make a comparison. Are people really going to raise that issue? Shani Hechal, the Hechal itself was unique; it was different." Dichtiv, why? Because it was written about it by Tain David Lishlomo Beno at Tavnit Haulam, Veet Beitav, Veet Gazban Ganzabal, Veal Yotav, Vechada Rav Hapnimi. Okay, that we have a Pasuk, right? That basically tells us that this was a divine text that the Torah tells us that David was given Shlomo, right? The, let's call it the blueprint of the Ulam and its various components, the treasure rooms, the upper rooms, the uh, storeroom, right? Uh, all of these places, and then it's also written, HaKol Bichtav Miyad Hashem Alai Taskil implying that these were all divinely uh, uh, designed. Let's use that word for a moment. Okay, and therefore, you, according to Rav Yosef, you can't use that as an example to say some places were sanctified and, uh, and uh, others were not. Okay, so therefore, we go to another brighter, Tashma. Listen to the, the following brighter. Halishkot habniyot bakodesh. Okay, those 
lishkot, right? We have the various, let's call them storerooms, okay? That were built in the area of the uh, temple precinct, okay? And, and if we go back to that example on 85, right? Where we had uh, an art scroll at least, right? We had a diagram there. It was 85B3, okay? And, um, okay, we noticed that we have various rooms. Look at uh, number nine, for example. Okay, we have a variety of locations that those are roof chambers in the courtyard, okay? Now, there is some, you see that, that both the Let's say that there are two entrance ways that both would be within the general courtyard. On the other hand, you have some where you have one entrance that would be against the wall and another entrance into the courtyard. So the entrance that goes that's against the wall, okay, would actually take you outside the temple precinct an area that would not be Kodesh, whereas the other entrance of that same room would be taking you inside the main area of the of the base of Mikdash, right, which would be Kodesh. So that's what we're talking about, is these Lishkot, these chambers, these areas, okay, some of them, as I said, being storerooms, okay. So keeping that the diagram there in mind, halishkot habnuyot ba kodesh uptuchot lachol, we have these chambers, let's say, that were built within the temple precincts, but they open out, okay, to the outside, right, to the non-sacred area. Tochan chol, their contents then are are un un unconsecrated. Vigagotehem Kodesh, but their roofs are holy. Now, Tirgama Rav Chista, and Rav Chista explained this as follows, this Braita, Beshigegotehem Shavim Lekarka Azara. That's when their roofs were equal to the floor of the Azara, the temple precinct. So he's arguing, Rav Chista, that these were really almost underground chambers, below level, okay, of the basic floor, okay, and the roof of those uh, chambers was really the on the floor of the Azara itself. Ihachi says the Gemara, if that's the case, Amos Sefer. I would say, what about the end of the Brita? Benuyot b'chol, uptuchot Kodesh. If they were built in the non-sacred side, uptuchot Kodesh, but they opened into the sacred, into the Azara, tochan Kodesh, v'gagotei henchol, then they're in whatever's inside is considered sacred, and their roofs would be non-consecrated. Okay, Azara. And if you're going to think that their roofs were equivalent to the floor of the temple precinct of the Mishkan area, Havyala Michilot. Then, as I said, they would have to be like tunnels, underground areas. Va'ama Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Yochanan had said, "Mechilot lo nikkadshu," that the tunnels were not sanctified. So the Gemara says, "Ki ka'ama Rabbi Yochanan." When Rabbi said, Yochanan said that, "Ve'petuchot lahar habayit." That was when those tunnels led, okay, and their openings were, so to speak, 
let's say, on the mountainside. Okay? Kitanya hahi bepetuchot azara, as we taught that others opened into the temple precinct. But the Gemara questions it and says, Vahatanya. But I we taught elsewhere in another Brita. Rabbi Yehuda only, it says Rabbi Yehuda, Michilot, Mitachat Haichal, Chol, that those tunnels that were underneath the, let's say, the Heichal, right, the base of Mikdash, they were non consecrated. And so the Gemara responds, Kitanya Hai, Sheptuchot Lechol. When that was taught, it was because they opened up into a non-sacred area. Fine, says the Gemara. Then let's try another brighter to explain this whole issue of roofs and so on. Tashma, Vigago Kodesh. We have a brightest that says its roof was holy. So the Gemara says, Vatispara, and this does seem logical. Why? Vahakatani. Because here wasn't the following taught. Gagin halalu, ein ochlin sham kodshe kadoshim. Okay, with these, on these roofs, one is not permitted to eat most holy offerings. Ve'ein shochtin sham kadoshim kalim. And we are not able to slaughter lesser holy offerings on these roofs. The elakasha. But rather, this seems to be problematic. It says, Gago Kadosh, that its roof was holy. Ama Rav Chama. says, Rav Chama Bagoya, Laotan Shte Amot. We're saying that referred to those, <coughs> excuse me, those two measures, those two kinds of Amot that were used regarding the base of Mikdash. Ditznan. Why? Because we have a Mishnah that taught the following. Shte amot hayu b'shushan habira. That there were two amot measures that were kept usually in the upper room of the Heichal. That no, that's uh, my habira, the Persian capital. Okay. Echad al karen mizrahit's phony. One of them was in the northeast corner. The Echad, <coughs> sorry, the Echad al Karen Mizrahit to Dromit, and one of them in the southeastern corner. Zu shall al Karen Mizrahit's phone the one that was in, kept in the northeast corner. Haita Yetera al Shel Moshe. That that measure, okay, think of almost something like a, a yardstick for the moment, okay? It was slightly larger than the Amma that was identified with Moshe in the, as the biblical Amma by half a finger. Chatsi okay? Etzba. Vizoshe al Karen Mizrahit Romit, and the measure, the K, okay, again, like almost a yardstick, the measure of, of Ama that was kept in the southeastern corner, Haitayatera Ale Chatsi Atzba. And that particular measure was another half finger larger than the earlier one that we just mentioned. Okay? So therefore, says the Gemara, Nimseit Yetera al Shel Moshe Etzba. And therefore we find that it was longer than the Amma of Moshe identified in the Torah by an entire finger. So the Gemara then says, Velama Hayu Echat Kedola. The Echad Ketana, and why was one longer and one shorter? Shehiyu ha'omanim notlim b'ketana u'machzirim b'gedola. That the artisans 
used to take their measurement by the shorter one, but when they would do their work, they would build or give something, okay, to the base Hamikdash. It was based on the measure of the longer one. So that they would not become subject to the possibility of being transgressing Meila. Vatarte Lamali, and the two of them, why do we need it? Echat Lekaspa Udahava. One was used for measuring silver and gold, the Echat Levanina, and the other was used for general construction for the bricks. Tanan. Now we come back to something else from our Mishnah. Because it said, that the windows and the thickness of the wall was like the inside. That's acceptable when we say that we find that the windows were equal. In other words, on to the ground level of the of the uh, temple precinct, right? Ela ove hachoma, but the thickness of the walls, hechi mishkachat la. How is do we find that possible? Mishkachat la bebar shura. We find that with an example of a low wall. The ktiv. Why? <coughs> because we have a pasuk that says ve'aha val chel vechoma. Va'amar Rabbi Acha, and Rabbi Acha said, Ve'itema Rabbi Chinina, and others say, Shura Ubar Shura. So again, if we were to look at that drawing, right, on uh, 85, okay, B3 again, okay. Uh, we could see that perhaps, okay, they're talking about uh, a wall, right? That uh, if you look at uh, number seven on the drawing, it says courtyard wall, 40 ama high, abutted by low supporting wall. And that is what they are referring to, okay? So it was uh, that area there, okay? And we finish that part of the Gemara. Our new Mishnah, okay, is going to, however, come back to a discussion of the eating of the Korban Pesach, right? And we said, clearly already we realize that you have these chaburot, these uh, registered groups, okay? And so the Mishnah now is going to say the following. Shte chaburot shahayu ochlin bebayet echad. You have two different registered groups that are eating in the same venue, okay? Uh, a large home, a, a big uh, hall, okay? Or they're in one room in one, in the, and then in another group is in another, okay, room. Elu hofchim et pnehem helech v'ochlim, says the Mishnah, this group face in one direction, and they eat. Ve'elu hofchim et pnehem helech v'ochlim. And the other group, okay, is facing in another yes. direction, and they eat. Vahamecham ma'emza. Okay, and the mecham, uh, which we could translate, uh, one one translation was boiler. <clears throat> Another translation could be um, a kumkum, like a, uh, you know, the kettle, but this is more than a kettle, it's like a large uh, a samovar or a large. Uh, item, you know, for uh, 
getting hot water and things like that, okay, that would be between them. So what happens, says the Gemara, uh, the Mishnah, I'm sorry, when the waiter, okay, is ready to serve, what happens? Kofetz et piv, he has to close his mouth, umachzir et panav, okay, and uh, move his face, only look in the direction, okay? Ad shemagia etzel chavurato, until he gets to the group that he is registered with. Ve'ochel, and then he can eat with that group. Okay, so in other words, so there is a limitation. You could theoretically have the same waiter, okay, serving both groups, but he can only eat with one. Where he's registered. Okay. Now, since we're talking about somebody eating with a group, we continue the mission. Vahakala, and as regards to a bride, hofechet et paneha v'ochelet. Even though she's eating within a group, right? Because they're all gathered there for the Sudas uh, wedding, the wedding meal, right? She can turn her face away from the group and be able to eat. Now, Gemara asks the beginning, Matnit and Mani, our mission is according to whom? Rabbi Yehuda, he. It seems to be according to Rabbi Yehuda, the Tanya who taught the following Brayta. Al habatim asher yechlu oto bahem based on the homes that one will eat there, right? Milameid shehapesach ne'echal b'shtei chavurot, which seems to teach that the korban pesach may be eaten in two groups. Yechol yehei ha'ochel, ochel b'shtei mekomot. Is it possible then that one could eat the korban pesach registered in two different places. Talmud Lomar, Babayat Echad Ye Achel. And therefore the text of the Torah teaches in one house it will be eaten. Mikan Amru, and from here they said, Hashamash She'achal Kesayet B'tzad Hatanur, that the waiter can eat a olive's amount of the Korban Pesach, right beside the oven, okay? <clears throat> and if he is smart, clever, he'll fill up and eat as much as he needs to, okay? He has fill his stomach in that eating at that location. Ve'im ratsu b'nei chavura. And if the members of the registered group of which that Shamash is supposed to be a part want to do him a favor, so to speak, they would come and sit along with him, okay, according to the view of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon, however, says, Al habatim asher yochlu oto bahem, citing the same pasuk, he says again on the whole houses that they'll eat with them. Melamed shah ochel ochel b'shte mikomot. He also seems to say that it teaches that a person can eat their korban pesach in two places. As we go over to the next, yechol yehi neachal. Does this seem to be that he can eat it with two different registered groups? Talmud Loma, Rebayat Echad Yechel. Says the text, in one household it shall be eaten. Bamai Kemiflage, what are they arguing about then? Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Rabbi Yehuda understood the Pasuk in the following way. Yesh aim le masoret. 
that the tradition follows, okay, the way that we have the tradition, okay, in regarding to the way the text is written. The Rabbi Shimon Savar, Yesh Aim Lamikra. And Rabbi Shimon is of the opinion that we follow the tradition and that the way it's written. So when we have Cray and Kativ, this is their di- argument. Do we follow the way it's and interpret it the way it's written or the way it's written, the way it is read? If you read it, Babayat Echad Yochal, that's one thing. If you read it, Babayat Echad Ye Ochel, it's something else. Because I could say, Babayat Echad Yochal, that refers to the person eating. If I say, Babayat Echad Ye Ochel, I could say that refers to the Korban Pesach. So that may be part of their machloket. Okay. So Gemara, however, proceeds. Hayu yoshvin benefarsa mechitza benehem. What about the following situation? It says that you have the people seated at, let's say, a long table, and you put some sort of barrier on the table. Okay between the two, right? Now, do you have two separate groups or do you still have one group? According to the one who says that the Korban Pesach can be eaten with two registered groups, we can eat it. But according to the one who says that the Korban Pesach cannot be eaten in two separate registered groups, we can't eat it. So the Mishnah, the Gemara continues. Say with that they were sitting at a long table and there had been some sort of divider between them, and they removed the divider, okay? So now there's no divider between them. According to the one who's referring to the one who eats, okay? One can eat in two places. They can proceed to eat. The Devrei Haomer, Ein Haochel, Ochel Bishnei Mekomot, Ein Ochlin. And according to the one who says that one cannot eat in two places, they cannot eat. Now, we're going to get a couple of stories that try to bring support to help us understand what is the decision here. Yativ Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana was sitting, kapashit le mifshat, okay? And he tried to give an answer to the following. Right. Amar le Rav Ashi, the Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana, res, Rav Ashi responds to him and says the following. V'tabaye lach ibaye. You should have phrased that example as a question. Siluk mechitza, va'asiyat mechitza. The removal of a partition or the positioning of a partition. Mihavi kishte mekomot. Is this possible like two locations? Ukishte chaburot adami. Or like two registered groups? Is it, are they similar? Oh, no. Or if not, teku, and we don't come to we stand and don't come to an answer. Okay, now next part of our Mishnah raised the issue of the bride. Hakala, ofechet et paneha vechule. 
my tama. What's the reasoning that the bride gets to look away to be able to eat? Amar Rabbi Chia Bar Abba Amar Rabbi Yochanan. He responds this way: Mepnei shehi boshuha. Why? Because it's embarrassing. He says, for the bride to be eating there and having people watch her eat, especially because there may be people there that she doesn't know, people from, say, the groom side, right? Rav Huna, Bere de Rav Natan, okay, we get the following. Ikla lebe Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak. It once happened that Rav Huna, the son of Rav Natan, okay, came and visited the house of Rabbi Nachman bar Yitzchak. Okay. Amru lei mashimcha. And they said to him, what's your name? Amar laho Rav Huna. He said to them, my name is Rabbi Huna. Okay. Instead of simply saying, my name is Huna, he used his title, which could be considered a little bit of, uh, you know, haughtiness. Amru, they said to him, Nitav ma apurya. Let the master sit on a divan, on a bed. In other words, they invited him right in to sit down. Okay, again, he should have sort of uh, waited and said, well, I'll wait okay, before being seated, till more people come, or till everyone is invited, or things like that. Yativ, Yahavu Kasa. He sat down, and they gave him a cup. Kable, Bechad Zimna. Ushtaya, Betray Zimne. He received the cup at one time, again, without demurring, and he drank the contents of the cup in two, let's say, gulps. Okay? Velo ha'adar ape. And he didn't uh, move his face. He didn't uh, look the other way. Amrule. So uh, other they came to him and they said, Mai tama karit lach rav huna. What was the reason that you came and told us your name was Rabbi Huna, Amar Laho, he said to them, Baal Hashem okay, that is my name. So that's the name I've always used. Okay. <clears throat> I wasn't trying to be haughty, just wanted to know who I was. My Tamaki Amrulach Neteva Purya Yitvat. What was the reason that when they said to you, come and sit on the divan, you didn't uh, beg off a little bit, but you just came right in and sat down. Amar Laho, he answered them, Ko ma shiyomar lach ba'al habayat, ase chutz metzah, that anything that the household owner, in other words, the host, tells you to do, you should do, except, let's say, for leaving. Others want to explain the term mitzah there with other explanations, okay? Uh, let's say as in, uh, you know, go out to the restroom or things like that. My tama, what's the reasoning? Ki havi lach kasa, ki bechad zimna, that when they offered you a cup, you accepted it uh, the very first time it was offered. Okay, instead of, again, demurring and said, I'll wait. Amar Laho, he said to them, Mesar vim lekatan, okay, that one refuses, one can refuse a small cup. Ve'en mesar vim legadol, but one does not refuse a large cup. Ma'itama ishtate betray zimne. What was the reason that you drank it down in two gulps? Amar Laho, he responded and told them, Ditanya, because there's a brighter that teaches, Hashote koso bevat echat, 
one who drinks up his uh, whole cup in a single moment, a single gulp, hareze gargaran. He's a guzzler. Shnayim, one who drinks it in two gulps. Derech Eretz, that's the proper manners. Shlosha, one who drinks it in three. Megase Haruach, that person is sort of arrogant, showing off. Maitama lo ihadrat apech. What's the reason that you did not turn your face away? Amar laho, he said to them, Kala hofechet panehatna. Because it's a Mishnah is, teaches that the bride is the one who is permitted to turn her face away. Now, a further story. Rabbi Ishmael ba Rabbi Yossi. Okay. Now, just as an aside, we should know that Rabbi Yishmael was a contemporary of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, okay? but his father, Rabbi Yossi, was Rabbi Yossi Chalafta, one of the last of the uh, Tanaim that uh, was looked upon as uh, Reb, even by Rabbi as one of his rebbeim, as one of his teachers. So even though Rabbi Ishmael was a, let's see what they call Talmid Chaver, a colleague, okay, as well as a st student of Rebbe's, Rebbe had a lot of uh, respect for him. So he comes, Ikle Lebe Rebbe Shimon Be Rebbe Yossi Ben Lakunya. Again, he came to visit the house of one of the other rabbis. Yahavu le kasa, they extended him a cup, kable bechad zimna, and he took it the very first time. Vishatiya bechad zimna, and he drank it all at one time. Amrele, and they said to him, lo savar lamar, Hashotek hoso bevat echat. Hareze gargaran. Isn't the master of the opinion that one who drinks his entire cup in a single act is like a gargaran? You know, a, a uh, somebody who uh, just slurps it down, so to speak? Amarlo, he said to them, Lo amre because cha katan. They only said that, they didn't say that, regarding really a small cup. V'yaynach smartoch. Or when the wine is so sweet. V'kresi rechava. Or my stomach is so large, so hungry. Now, Ama Rav Huna, says Rav Huna, B'nei chavura, so now we understand better, okay, the whole reasons behind these stories. In other words, when you actually go uh, and have the opportunity to do traveling in Eretz Yisrael, you'll see that the nicer homes were arranged in a manner where there was like an ante room before you came into the dining room and people would wait in the ante room before then they were invited then to come and be in the dining room to sit on the divans and so understanding that we can appreciate then the fact that it's saying that the people who were registered together as a group were generally expected to come as a group minimally three people together. V'yotzim afilu be'echad. But after they ate, let's say, their portion of the of the uh, Korban Pesach, then they could leave as an individual. Amar Rava. So Rava says, v'hu da'ayil ba'idna d'regile l'meil. Okay? that this is when he came 
at the time that he was normally used to coming. Vahu diragash vaho daila. Okay. And here it's saying also that uh, he had come in and that the waiter was prepared, so to speak, to serve him. So even if when he came alone, he was being served. Now, Ama Ravina. Ravina, however, says the follows. Venot nim shachar damim. Okay? That what about the fact, if you said people can leave individually, what about if the group finished up and a person is still, uh, hadn't finished their meal yet? Okay? What has one have to do? Ravina says that one has to pay the waiter, okay, for his, so to speak, overtime, okay, for that person. And if one person is left alone after the group has, uh, has gone, okay, maybe like we saw before, they ate their meal and then went up onto the roof to do Hallel. Let's take that as an example. But one is still waiting to finish his food. Okay, he has to add, like give a tip, has to add money to the waiter. Velit hilchata kivate. But the Gemara tells us the law, however, is not like that which Ravina has said. Okay? And that's where we finish Hadranalach Ketzad Soli, how we finish that particular parak, okay, of the cooking and initial serving of the Korban Pesach. Okay, so we go on tomorrow to pay Zion Amud Aleph, where we continue with some more discussion, okay, about the whole eating and partaking of the Korban Pesach. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good day and everybody. Stay well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.